Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 8 part of this playlist that I'm going to call Principal Components Analysis. And we're going to do a brief introduction to what Principal Components Analysis means. And so first let's look in two dimensions and I'll have a graphical illustration in a second. But really we want to, so we, we plot our data, you know, in the X and Y axes or Y1, Y2 axes, and we want to rotate the X axis to the max, maximum variance or to the direction of maximum variance of this linear combination AY. And what that means, we have the variance of A transpose Y, which is equal to this, and we want to find the A1 and A2 that creates this a maximum, right? And then once we find that axis, and we call it Z1, and then Z2 has to be perpendicular to that, so it, it, it's a given. And Z1 and Z2 are called principal components. Now, note that the origin of the axis will be moved to the sample mean Y bar. And what this means is we have data that's plotted in here, and normally you don't put an ellipse around it, but that's to show you kind of the direction of maximum variance. And so we have this x-axis here, and we're going to rotate it up. And if we keep going, eventually it would be on top of the y-axis or the y-2-axis in this case. But at some point, you stop where the direction of maximum variance is achieved. And boom, that's your first principal component. And that's your new, you know, in quotes, x-axis or, the, you know, the new uh, abscissa, I think is the term. And then, of course, the ordinate or the y-axis, or in this case, y2-axis, is determined because it has to be perpendicular to the first axis. And the origin here, quote origin, you know, is normally at 0, 0 on these axes, but we move it to this. So that's kind of the new origin, and that's at the center of the data, y-bar. Now, that's for two dimensions. Now, what if we had three dimensions? So instead of the data looking like an ellipse, think of it looking like a pickle where there's volume. You know, there's an X, Y, and a Z axis. Or in, in you know, multivariate analysis, we'd call it Y1, Y2, and Y3 axes. So instead of rotating the, you know, Y1 axes, we also go to tilt it up and down. So we get to rotate and tilt up and down until it is in the direction of maximum variance of this three-dimensional data. Now, then the second axis has to be perpendicular to that first axis, but it can spin around it. It can rotate around it in the direction of maximum variance, assuming that we're perpendicular to the first axis, right? And then once we have the first two axes in three dimensions, the third one, or the z-axis, is determined because it ha there's only one choice to be perpendicular to both of those axes. So let's state what we just said there. So think of the ellipse as a pickle or something like that in three dimensions. We're going to rotate and or tilt the y-axis in the direction of maximum variance of this linear combination. So what it's saying is we take the variance of this linear combination and it, it's this. We want to find the A1, A2, and A3 that maximize that. And that's what we're doing by rotating and tilting. Now, that is non-mathematical terms. So in a second, we'll be more precise. But visually, that's what we're doing. So then next, you rotate Y2 perpendicularly, if that's a word, around Z1, the first principal component, in the direction of maximum variance. And note that, that Z2, the restriction being a perpendicular to Z1, now the third axis, Y3, has only one direction, it's perpendicular to both Z1 and Z2, and it's fixed. So these new axes, Z1, Z2, and Z3, they're all called principal components. Now to do this in P dimensions, it's exactly the same. So the first principal components, which is the maximum of this variance, the linear combination. So remember Y has, it's, it's a vector of length P. And we're also going to restrict A to be a, of length 1. So then the new axes, whatever it is, 
is this. We call it Z1. So in P dimensions, you know, you rotate and tilt and do whatever you do in higher dimensions. And But there is a direction of maximum variance, and that's called our first principal component. Now, the second principal component is the maximum of variance of a, this linear combination such that the length of A is 1, and we have to be perpendicular to the first principal component. Once we find that direction, that new axis is called the second principal component, Z2. Now we just keep going until we reach P. So generically, you know, the P principal component. So the ith principal component is, again, the maximum variance of this linear combination. This for all A, such that when the, the length of A has to be 1, and we're perpendicular to all the previous principal components or the you know new axes and this new axis zi is called the ith principal component now here's a theorem on how to calculate those principal components or the new axes we let y be a random p by 1 vector with variance covariance matrix sigma then we let the eigenvalue vector pairs of sigma be lambda 1 E1, lambda P, EP, you know, all in between, where the lambdas are ordered. So lambda 1 is the largest, lambda P is the smallest. These eigenvectors are, are normalized, which means they have a length of 1, and uh, their dot products, the cross products, are 0. So that means they're all perpendicular to each other. Then the ith principal component, ZI, is just EI transpose Y. So it's this eigenvector times a linear combination. And then, of course, when you expand that linear combination, it's this. The variance of ZI, that i the principal component, is lambda I. And of course, the covariance between ZI and any other pr principal component is, is zero. Now, one note here, so the First principal component, so the direction of maximum variance, Z1, is E1 transpose times Y, where E1 is associated with lambda 1. Now, the components of the vector EI are called principal components loadings. And those will have information stored in them, which we will cover in the next video. So... Let's look at an illustration. And so here, I'm going to point you to back to 8MV38. So that's the applied multivariate analysis of 38th video in that playlist. Because the actual data is not important for this video, we'll, we'll cover it in more detail in the next videos. But it deals with uh, football data. They're trying to look at the injuries associated with football helmets. And really, I just want to show you the plots and to get to give you a feel of what we're going to do. So there's a, a function called PR comp and and we and we take which finds the principal components of the data. So group is not part of the continuous variable, so we remove it. And then it spits these out. These are the, eigenvectors associated with the eigenvalues. So this PC1 is E1 in the formula we just covered. These are, this is the, you know, this is A. This is the linear, uh, you know, the, the A1, A2, A3, A4 that points, you know, that points in the maximum or the values that create the maximum variance of that linear combination. So we can plot the first two principal components against each other. Now the goal here is to not separate the groups, but the first principal components always does. It always kind of clusters the groups if there's a group associated with it, which is not the goal of principal components. But this plot may tell us some stuff, and we'll look at that in a later video. The next one's called a scree plot, where... We plot, so this is the first principal component, second principal component, third, and then there's certain variances associated with that. Um, and then this helps us determine how many variables or how many principal components we should keep to explain the data. 
And if we go back to our original plot, it may be that, you know, when the plot is, you know, spread out like this, Y1 and Y2 don't really, you know, we need both variables to describe the data. But by tilting the data, we, we kind of, you know, that's most of the variance in the data. So maybe we only need the first principal component to explain all this data. Or, or maybe we just need the first two of many to explain all the data. Um, okay, so I'm at 10 minutes and I better stop here. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.